So yeah, for sure. Um, let's get it started. Thanks for having me, everyone. So um, good evening and welcome to today's session. Thanks to everyone for the time to join in this session. My name is Solvin and uh, I feel great honor to be today's panel. And uh, let's go to work through some of the cash financial modeling tasks together with you guys to let's get it started. So um, the first thing I want to mention is like for today's session, uh, basically it's the first one in our whole series about the preparation and financial modeling test. And in today's session, uh, which is pretty straightforward, it's not like just given the situation that we already have two statements, basically it's an uh, income statement and a financial balance sheet. And what we need to do is trying to figure out the cash flow situation and to build the uh, cash flow statement from scratch on the right hand side. So right afterwards, if you go um, right on here, we can see uh, some of the statement has been briefed, has been like, just make it pretty simple and straightforward. And uh, right up here, you can see there's the check about the balance sheet, see whether it's, uh, you know, get balanced or not. So um, let's get into it. So uh, the first thing is like, we're trying to uh, um, copy paste to some of the formatting part into this side. Okay, so basically here we just change into cash flow statement and it's a financial year of 2021. And what we can get as well is to see uh, some of the yellow highlighted cells are pretty cool, uh, are pretty important here. And also the uh, main critical sites, for example, the bottom line of the net income, uh, the income, the income statement. And also um, this one, the cash in 2021 is basically the target for us to solve this. And we need to get the number. Um, probably it should be uh, it should be the same thing as the check because right now we have a, a imbalance here, so that means we're getting difference in numbers. Okay, so cool. Let's get into it. Um, basically, the cash flow statement what we use in today's test is the indirect method, which means that is more based on the cruel accounting. And there's another method called named as direct method. I sort of use it's more about like just directly to calculate the changes happening in cash. Uh, for example, we just directly calculate all the items that are connected with the cash instead of using any other like uh, uh, classification about the usage of the cash. So that is a major difference. And uh, so usually we study from net income uh, as the cash flow for operating activities. And then we come up with some depreciation and amortization. Because like the depreciation and amortization is a non-cash expenses, so we need to um, add it back as it has been reduced in the net income calculation. And then what we need to do is like to calculate the change in operating uh, in working capital. And uh, usually for what we have in our working capital is uh, we can to make it dynamic, we can say like the changes in uh, note here we have a tab bottom because like we don't want to be connected together with the following cell. So we specifically add a tab into here. And then we put an add sign and then with the relative um, item that we want to. So you can see it as being like um, directly linked to what we have. And then if we um, copy paste, so it can be directly linked to what we have. And then changes in work uh, in um, counts receivable. And also changes in inventory. And changes in uh, the operating asset. So, but one thing I we need to note it down here is like when it comes to the asset side, if you think of this way, uh, the asset going to increase, which basically means the cash outflow. And in the liability side, it's the opposite situation because like the liability increase, basically that means the cash inflow, right? If you think of it this way, like uh, um, you spend more money on the asset, uh, basically you're going to pay it, right? You're going to buy something. So it's all about like you, you, you cash made a cash outflow. And the debt is like you're raising more debt, you get more cash, right? So it's like it can be counted as a cash inflow. So right now here in the asset part, um, we press F2 key and manage the negative sign before um, get the bracket and so close the bracket. Also, uh, similar sign, similar to uh, uh, similar to this one as well. We need to make a negative sign before just to see that it's uh, 
it's in cache outflow. So there we go. And then uh, just copy paste with the formatting. Um, it's not the total kernel set because basically just add up the three above, three items above. And then what we need to change is like it's not the uh, e fourteen, e thirteen, but it's more about like a, um, a certain. That I think it's more about like a um, uh, kernel liabilities. Southern debt and uh, okay, we just copy it and paste here until the text viewable and uh, and also kill the current asset and changes what changes in certain data as I mentioned before. Um, it's just the difference between the system 21 and 22. Uh, however, we we Right now, we we can see this don't need to add a negative sign before because that will be um, a caching flow. If the that really decreases, basically that means the cache the cache we just outflow it and we don't have any that as much as before, so we just pay for it. And uh, here is a special thing we need to mention is like uh, notice that the changes in current parser of long term debt um, is not really the situation, and uh, this one should be adding to the long term debt, which is uh, more like the cash flow from Financing set, so we don't conclude it here. Uh, the changes happening in accounts payable is uh, same as what we do for the changes in uh, changes in just to, to check. Okay, so just to quickly check again, we go to formats, right? And um, uh, I think that's all for the changes in operating uh, working capital side, and uh, we sum it up. And uh, that is the sum of it. Which is the cash flow from our operating activities? Then we move to the cash flow from um, from the investing activities, which means like the cash outflow or inflow to the company when it comes to investing. And usually we just starting from the purchase of um, like the PPNG. And the inventory is the main uh, target of the fee that usually investing activities happen. So we just start from property. Uh, uh, basically, it was like the property plan and the equipment. And right now, we use uh, um, look at here the non current asset. We have both of the gross amount and also the net amount. Why we use the gross amount is like for we have already involved the accumulated depreciation in our in our cash flow from operating until the site, so we don't need to double count it, which is uh, PBNE. And then we have um, purchase of uh, basically just long term asset, also asset. So we can use the formulas again. Now the here uh, specifically we have a, you see that we have a, a tab here because we don't want to if we don't have the tab we can I can show you actually uh, what being be linked is just directly with the item and you don't want to see it like a uh, long term asset so there's no uh, space between the purchase of blah blah blah. So this is something that we need to uh, be careful of. Again, let's talk about the assets. So we get no, um, luckily we get it checked. So now with the formula, um, just fine. Just, just do here. 
um, offset the 50 thickness. So here we go. Let's just have an offset. Uh, um, if there's anything else, we didn't well, I think that's all it. Send it up. Just not talking fifteen, it's like ten. Um again, um the purchase is like um because the asset is gonna increase basically in the cash outflow, so all of the purchase here in the SSI we should be a uh, add an active sign to it. Cause basically that means you spend money, right? Or we can actually just um actually we can do this way but uh this might not be a, a good idea, you know. But anyway, just do it. Um so just uh, quickly get it get it um get it bound. It's like a formatting part. Okay. And also add into a uh a top line bar and uh, for the Scroll as well, we add a top line bar, so just make it look more good. The next thing is straightforward to touch it. And the next side will be the cash flow from financing activities. Basically means um, some of the, you know, uh, like the financing through in the form of either equity or other debt. So basically that means how does the company finance itself to sustain its um, daily operations and also sustains the development of the company. And um, the first thing we can figure out here is like, uh, we just finished all of the current liability part. Okay, so then we can start from the, the long term side. Okay, so start from this side. So let's see. Increase in long term debt. Uh, basically, that means the difference between minus this one and also. Uh, Increasing other liabilities, which is uh, and what we also we have is that's all about the that that financing, and then we move to the equity financing as well. Uh, we can see here the common equity can increase, which means there uh, should be some of the new insurance of the equity. So we add up a new item here. So uh, like uh, I think it should be just call it a proceeds for share um, insurance insurance. Uh, someone is asking. Um, uh, someone is asking about like why we need to do in this sequence. So basically, that means. Um, we just uh we just uh just follow some with with the sequence of like starting from operating to investing to uh to the financing and uh, that makes sense because of the operating activities is like may mainly including the income statement side and also the investing side is more about like the asset and uh, when it comes to the liability and the shareholders equity there are some of the items that we can use in calculating about the cash flow from financing activities so that's why we we listed right here. Let's go back to it. So the um, process per share insurance is like just the difference between common share sold as equity and also uh, what we have else is like um, right now we don't don't need to involve the accumulated other comprehensive income and loss here because um, basically that means some of the, um, the non-recurring or you know just uh, just 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 no the real changes happening in the cash. There's just no specific changes happening uh, with the cash transactions. Basically that means uh, you buy a house or you buy a factory this year and it's being valued as 1,000 million. Um, however, that doesn't mean that if the, the horse or the, um, the fixed asset is going to increase in the future, it doesn't, doesn't really mean that you're going to just pay for it through cash. So there's no specific the cash flow statement happening here, so we don't involve into that part into consideration. Um, but one thing that we really need to focus on is like, why, did you see that we have the uh let me think of it it's like um we have a retained earning difference and um 
So the, the dividends, pay, oh, um, the return earnings is similar to that is also, um, oh, okay, so basically the return earnings, the, the way of calculating return earnings is like, um, the, this one, the 2021 return earning equal to the return earning happened in 2020 plus net income divided by the dividend. Um, dividend is something that we need to evolve into the consideration in the uh, financing activities. The reason why we don't need to, we don't need to directly calculate the difference between the two retained earnings is for like, uh, remember that we have already involved the net income here into the cash flow statement from the operating activities. So basically we don't have to do it again. We, we just want to, um, okay, so here's a, a typo. Uh, so we don't want to involve it again into the finan uh, 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 financing activity as well. So we don't dividend it and usually the dividends, um, you know, for some interview question, we can just neglect it. We just assume uh, that it's just zero dividends. But in this kind of a test for simplicity, we just involve uh, the return earning uh, dividends here. Usually we can find it also in the statement of shareholders equity as well. Um, so it equals to 1,638. Um, that is the dividends that we need to take. Um, basically, dividends is like a cash outflow. So we also need to press F2 key and uh, Add a, add a negative sign here. And uh, that's, that's pretty much about the cash flow um, from financing activities. We just need some, some of them more. What we can get is, um, okay, so let's see, it's 313. That's uh, 312. Uh, okay, so that's pretty much about, oh, sorry. That's pretty much about all of the, uh, uh, at, a, at a top line bar, it's pretty much about all the cash hinges. And then um, what we have is like cash beginning of year equals to 2020, 2020s on this one. And uh, in this year, cash, what we get is. Uh, We add up all the three categories of the cash flow. That's pretty much about it. And then we just calculate the end of the year, which equals to the sum of the power sum. So it's uh, 100 salty, 100 sum. Um, okay, so basically that's the cash end of the year. And uh, we evolve into here. We just calculate that to the number. What we're gonna find it. Um, so here we go and go back to up downwards to see how does. Oh, okay. So um, it doesn't balance. So <laughs> yeah, okay. It doesn't balance. So it's only with three. Um, okay, so let me figure out. So basically that means the asset is like three um, more than the total liability in the shareholders equity. Um, okay, so um, what's the issue of it? Is there anyone know what happened with the, with the problem? Oh, I got it, I got it. Uh, Oh, see that? Um, I think the issue happening here is the long-term debt. Do you guys remember? Oh yeah, I saw someone asking about the, the long-term debt, right? Um, there's a mistake here in the calculation of the long-term debt. Basically, we also need to, you know, press F2 key, uh, open the bracket, close it, and we add. Also need to, do you guys remember this also uh, changes that we don't evolve here in the current portion of long-term debt, although it's like the current portion, but we don't really need, but we don't really like count it as a, you know, the current liability side in the upper working capital instead of we need to evolve it here. So basically we need to add up the difference. Um, I think this, this should be the way. Okay, so now it's like uh, a fix it and uh, I think, okay, so cool. We, we got it balanced. Uh, sometimes you also add up just a quick function about Uh, if what we say is like if 
the check part equals to zero. Uh, we say it, uh, we say this that I pass. It's going to be pass or it will be fail. Um, okay, so I think here's the list of fail. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. You can see that. Oh, okay. Now it's all pass. So, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, basically, that's pretty much about it. Mm. We also do a quick formatting. I hope this can be helpful like for you guys to understand about how this thing works. Some of the, you know, like basically what we have is a practical, uh, yeah, uh, sometimes asking that is this right now is dynamic link. That's true. Um, you can just pretty change any single item here in the bash and income statement and then the cash flow can change as well. Also remember, do you guys like to, is it, do you guys remember that here's a pretty typical question in the investment making interview. It's about if you, Change the depreciation and amortization. For example, we plus into plus 100 into 844. Actually, you can see that the only changes happening here is the depreciation and amortization of the net income. Cause like, cause, cause that is um, cause you know as it it's um, it's um, it's um, like um, non cash expenses. It's gonna it's gonna only change this to other. Okay, and there's no one big difference happening other uh, uh, single elsewhere. Okay, cool. Um, that's it. So thank you everyone's coming for today's session. If you have any, any any questions else, like you know, I know someone is also asking um, questions on the chat box. Feel free to uh, leave your questions. I will be here for uh, over like five minutes or ten minutes, and also I will leave you uh, leave you guys with my email address too. So feel free to ask me any questions you may have. Okay, thank you.